Hi everyone, my name's Adam. Welcome back to part 5 of my video series on creating a flight controller using X-Plane and LabVIEW. One of the things that can make repeatable testing and tuning of our control loops difficult is the fact that the responsiveness of our aircraft in all three of its axes changes with airspeed. We can address this problem in a later video using a gain scheduler, but today we're going to look at adding airspeed control into our flight controller which will allow us to maintain a desired airspeed for tuning purposes. Let's get started. So over here we have where we left off last time. I may have tidied it, but otherwise it's functionally the same. I should mention too that I've started uploading all of the files from my videos uh, into a Git repository. There should be a link in the video description below if you want to play around with it yourself. And I've also switched over from using the evaluation version of LabVIEW to using LabVIEW Home and Student Edition which is available quite economically and is intended for hobbyists and makers so there's a link for that in the description below as well. We have a different plane today at the request of one of our viewers um, but other than that everything's the same. So what we want to do is we want to we want to get airspeed into our into our control system. So we need to be able to read our current airspeed and we also need to be able to control throttle um, of the engine so that, that's how we're going to control airspeed. There's other mechanisms we could use but today we're just going to use throttle. So to start let's go to X-Plane and let's find out where those parameters live. So these are the, the data elements we had last time and we don't have any airspeed or any throttle settings there so we're going to have to find some more data. Now the first one we're going to need is speeds. On there. And the other one we're going to need there's, there's two commands down here. There's throttle command and there's throttle actual. So we'll grab both of them for the moment and see what the difference is. And you can see that I'm only selecting the fourth column here. For the moment, I only want to display these in the cockpit just so I can see what they are. Okay, so you can see we've got some new data there. Um, we've got a whole range of different, different speeds, both in knots and in miles per hour. So we're really only going to want one of them. Um, so probably for, for our purposes, what we want is vTrue airspeed and then down the bottom here we have our two different throttle commands um, so this one is commanded and this one is actual on a lot of aircraft they will be the same uh, but in some aircraft such as this turboprop the there's other engine management that goes on as part of the aircraft and so if you watch, as I increase throttle on this aircraft, the actual throttle will lag behind and won't necessarily reach the, the value that I set. So I set full throttle, and you'll see that throttle here only ramps up to about 0.7, and it actually, there's a, there's a lag there as well. So the aircraft will decide for itself when it wants actual full engine power, uh, whether that's at altitude or at a particular airspeed or due to prop pitch or whatever that might be. Um, but we're not too worried about that at the moment. So what we want to control is the throttle command. So the reason that in this data input and output in screen, the reason that I only selected this column is you might recall uh, back in the first video when I explained how explain bundles up the data and sends it out over UDP that basically it sends this data out in exactly the same order that it appears on the screen so as soon as we go and add data that's before or in between the existing data that we were using that's going to upset all our index numbers so if I'm now sending that out over the network, all of these index numbers for these values that we were using will have been changed by 9. 
and our control system will no longer work. So let me demonstrate that. Turn that back off for the moment. We come over here, we start our control system. We go over here and we add in speeds. What we'll see immediately is that we lost our measured pitch from over in our controller. The aircraft keeps flying, but you can see that it's now starting to roll and it's pitching uncontrollably. So our controller's just stopped working, which is actually one of the nicer ways it could fail. What could have happened is that our control commands could now be going into a different axis from the one we wanted and things would things would go much worse than they are now. If I turn that back off again, it will slightly ungracefully recover itself. So what we're going to have to do is to add in these new um, these new parameters that we want. We're going to have to update our function over here in our block diagram that unpacks the x-plane data. So I'll go and do that in the background and then I'll come back. I added those two new sets of data going out over the network and over in our controller in our unpacking section I added our input cluster that feeds into the, the flatten. I just added another 18 single digit floats into that so it's now we can see it's now 36 single precision floats displaying that as an icon for the sake of size now the other thing we have to do to get back to where we were in terms of functionality is we have to increase all our indexes by 9 because these airspeed data have slotted in in front of all the other data that we were using before. So our measured pitch is now index 19. Zero, which is the invisible index out the front of our control surface data, um, which we reuse to send the data out. So it's now going to be nine. And down here, our little helper role and your controls are going to become 20 and 21. And if we run that now, I don't know why the heading holds being funny, but that should now be back to being a working control system. So we've, we've still got pitch control. Looks like our yaw control's working. Our heading hold started at a funny value, but it's working. You can see our heading here holding fairly stable. So so we're back to, back to a functioning system. So that's one of the big drawbacks, though, of using this data input output um, area in X-Plane is that Every time you add or remove data, all your indexes over here are going to change and we're going to have to go and change that input format cluster going into the unflatten command to tell it what all our incoming variables are. Uh, the other thing that's fun over the longer term is that these values can change um, between versions of X-Plane. So things can move around, index numbers can change. And the other problem is that these parameters aren't particularly well documented. Um, so there's not a good document anywhere that describes exactly what it is that you're seeing. You know, some things it's pretty obvious what it is that you're seeing, and in other areas it's not. This is not the ideal way to do it, as I said in the first video, and later on we'll look at how to use, use data refs instead, which is another system that, that Xplane includes for accessing internal data. But once again, this is good for getting a quick prototype up and running, you know, for a proof of concept type of exercise, which is still what we're doing right now. Okay, so we'll pause that. 
and we'll stop our controller. Let's look at what we need to do to be able to control airspeed. Over on our block diagram, this section here is basically our entire pitch control loop. So it's got our inputs, our output graph, the actual control component, our gains, the whole lot. So for the sake of getting something going quickly, what we're going to do is going to copy that, expand my while loop. And I'll just bring it down here now. I'll we'll tidy this up later. So what we need to feed into that is this array here, which is our array of input data. And it's already running down here to run our little roll stabilizer and our, our heading hold system. So we can bring that down into here. We need to know what index number we need to look at to see our indicated airspeed and so we decided we wanted over here v true we've got our invisible index out here which will be zero this will be one two three so index three okay so that should hopefully display airspeed for us. So let's see if it works. Okay. Don't know why that's upset. There we go. I recovered that. Um, so what we can see, airspeed of around 150, if we come and look over here, that looks like that's about right. So that, that looks like it's working. We can see airspeed. Now, obviously, we can do whatever we want with this set point, and it's not going to do anything at all because we're not controlling throttle. We need to work out how to get that data back into X-Plane. Uh, it should just be the same as what we did before. We find out the index for the particular control we want to change and we feed it in. Now we're actually going to have to send in two separate um, two se well not two separate packets, we're going to have to create another one of these strings because our throttle command is in a, a separate data set to our other control surface deflections so we can't just feed throttle in here somewhere we're going to have to create another one of these we're going to have to do this same flatten operation and concatenate it into this output string so what I'm going to do I'm going to move this down here going to add on a third element that we're going to concatenate to the string and then I'm going to take a copy of this whole section here point it down here in the middle of nowhere the output from that is going to go into this third element now over in X-Plane that uh, set of data only has the first element. So we only have commanded throttle, there's no other data. Uh, so we can feed minus 999 into everything except our first element. This hooks up to the same array of data that everything else does. Our output from our control loop go up into here. Now all we need to know is what this what this index number is going to be. So we know that these go up by so the first one's zero, the second one's nine, third one's eighteen, that should be twenty-seven out there. Okay, so let's try that and see what happens.
Okay, looks like it wants to do something. Don't know why that heading hold keeps doing that. So it looks like we're tracking towards a desired airspeed. The thing we noticed though, and you would have seen it when maybe when we're on the ground, and you can see it if I do it here, is that it's setting the throttle value to numbers much, much larger than one. So recall that all our control surfaces, and our throttle is no different, are expressed as a ratio from, from 0 to 1, or from minus 1 to 1, depending on the, the surface. So the throttle should only go from 0 to 1. So sending it a value of 10 or 15 doesn't get you any more throttle. So we probably need to change our gain, but we can also limit the output of our control system to only match the ranges of the control surfaces. So let's bring it back to something that it can actually achieve and see what the response looks like. And again, we can see there it's feeding in negative throttle, which won't actually do anything. We can't feed it less than zero throttle. But it's doing a reasonable job of, of tracking that 150 knot uh, desired speed that we set. Because we copied our pitch control, we've got our same ability to use a function generator. And so we can feed in a sine wave and see how it does tracking that sine wave. And we're not going to be able to track a very fast sine wave simply because airspeed is a very slow axis to respond. Uh, maybe if we make our amplitude larger but our frequency much smaller. And we can see how it does tracking that. So once once we slow it down, it does it does quite a good job. But you can see here it's lagging behind the set point because it's feeding in negative throttle. So it's basically the engines at idle and the aircraft's wanting to glide faster than what our set speed is. So maybe in the future we need to look at adding some sort of braking capability, um, you know, either flaps or spoilers or, you know, in this case we've got an aircraft with variable pitch, maybe we could actually actively, actively brake um, the aircraft with the variable pitch prop. But for the moment, we, we've got some speed control. So that's, that's really what we want. Because at the moment, I don't want to focus on speed control. I want to focus on tuning my roll pitch and your axes. So all I want to do is maintain a constant, a constant airspeed throughout my testing. Just for interest's sake, we'll feed it a square wave. And again, you can see that you know, the response in airspeed is very slow. It's a, it's a heavily damped system, naturally. We'd basically be unconcerned with getting any sort of oscillation, uh, regardless of, of the gain that we set. So something else that becomes apparent now is that we're duplicating a lot of functionality. So, you know, as you saw, this whole airspeed control was just a copy of the pitch control. This segment here, which processed the output data into a string for airspeed, was was a copy of what we'd done up here before, which was doing uh, elevator aileron and rudder. And that pattern's going to repeat. So as we end up with 
more axes and more complicated control algorithms, we're going to end up repeating the same functionality a lot of, a lot of times. So what we're going to do is move some of this stuff into sub VIs so that we can reuse that same functionality again and that way if we update how our controller works we can just update it once in the sub VI and we'll get that same functionality for all our axes instead of having to manually copy it and we'll also save a fair bit of space on our main diagram here and, and make it easier to understand So one of the ways that we can do this is we can select all the elements that we want to move into a new VI and we can go create sub VI. And what it does is it leaves all of the controls and the indicators behind and it just moves the processing part into this sub VI. So this is our the sub VI that it's created. And then it's got another copy of those controls and indicators in the sub VI. So this, this numeric indicator here is our, our output from our control system. And this one that it's labeled type, that's our, our, measured, our measured data. So we don't want to be doing this array subscript operation inside the controller, the sub VI, because this then makes it specific to a particular control, so we want we want our controller to be generic for whatever whatever axis we're going to use it on. So there's two two things we could do. We could either feed in an index into the controller from from externally, or we could just feed in. We could do this whole operation outside and just feed in the value that we the actual measured value that we want our controller to work on. And I think that's that's probably a better way to go because it means if we're using this later on and our our input data is coming from something that's that's not an array that's maybe maybe we're just sending it a, a single a single float from somewhere then we can change we don't need to we're not stuck with this bit of functionality so I'm actually going to cut that out of there I'm stick it back over here. So we'll just make it a bit clearer what some of this stuff is. Okay, so let's let's save that sub VI now. Let's call that a single axis control, I say. Okay, now I'm going to go and do the same thing for the data input and data output sections. This section up here, these two sections down here, and I'll do that off screen and come back. Okay, I spent some time and tidied up what we had and moved some different components into sub VI. So on the left is what we had before. Uh, should be should be exactly where we started from and on the right is what I've got now So let me just go through what I've done This section up the top which unpacked our UDP data that we received from Xplain I've taken all of that and moved it into this process UDP input VI So if we open that up And look at the block diagram 
you can see from the block diagram that it's just what we had over here on the left but now it's on its own its own VI so it takes the same things as before it takes a connection ID and an error it passes them back out again over on the right and it spits out an array from uh, of of single uh, single precision floating point data that we've received from Xplane. You'll see I also brought in over here this cluster to array function. Then we'll do that in here as well. So we're passing out an array rather than a cluster. The next thing I did was take our controller here, including the output chart, and moved all of that into its own VI. So I've created this new sub-VI called Single Axis Controller. And again, if we look at the, the block diagram of that, we can see that that's just a tidied up version of, of what we've had over here. So it takes input data from Xplane, our source selection, our set point, our parameters for the function generator and our proportional gain and it has an output value and the output chart and at the moment it just has our one proportional term being calculated in. So what this means is that we can now reuse that quite easily and I've done exactly that over here so you can see up the top we've got our pitch controller um, and then down below we've got our airspeed controller and it uses the same VI and the same controls. And what this means is that later on when we add integral or derivative terms or output limiting or rate limiting or whatever sort of functionality we want to add to the actual controller component, we can just add it once and all our axes will automatically get that functionality. I've just brought the roll control and the heading hold up from, from down below where they were positioned before. I'm not going to do anything with them, I'm just going to leave them there just so that we can see all our control components at once. And then the other thing I've done is you'll remember we had this component here which was packing up our output data to send it back to X-Plane and we actually duplicated that earlier in the video for our airspeed control so we, then we had two of them and it was starting to get a bit unwieldy so I've taken that and put it into its own sub VI as well which we've called process UDP output. Now I'm not sure yet if this is the best way to handle these inputs I might be better off putting them in a cluster if anyone has any thoughts please comment below but for the moment this is this is working so again we've just taken the functionality that we had in our main VI and we've moved it into this sub VI so that it declutters our main diagram and it compartmentalizes this functionality. So it means if we want to process data and send it to explain from a different VI, we can easily reuse this component. But it also means that if later on we want to, from our main controller, say we don't want to use explain anymore, say, I don't know, we want to talk to DCS or Armour or Flight Gear or something else, we can write a new VI to talk to that program and we just replace this one component each end of our main controller and we don't have to have to change anything else. So I think now we're probably ready for our next video where we'll come back to our, our single axis controller and we'll look at adding an integral term. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, please post in the comments section below. If you found this video interesting or informative and would like to see more videos like it in the future, please like and subscribe.